In this activity, I'm going to show you an application of radar charts. In particular, we're going to evaluate the sales effectiveness of our organization. Let's look at some of the tasks that we were asked to complete. In terms of these tasks, we do have five sales category in a survey that is in the starting file for this activity. We are asked to take the average of the responses for each of the questions in each category. We're also asked to include an if error statement. So uh, this is actually useful when you're giving somebody a blank survey that uh, certain errors won't show up. And we'll see if we use an average function of blanks, we actually get a divide by zero error. And uh, it's a little sloppy in my opinion to show that divide by zero error. Why not go ahead and display a blank, which is what we're asked. So. To continue, we were then asked to fill out the survey. We can uh, fill this out with real information. If you'd like to fill it out with your own data of your perception of your organizations, that's totally fine. If you want to use some fictitious information, uh, that's fine too. I'll choose to use some fictitious information. We are asked to fill out each one of these questions with a 1 through 5, 1 being strongly disagree all the way through 5 which is strongly agree, so anything in between, one through five. Uh, we'll create a summary table with the current and target state scores. So essentially, each of the current states is measured by the average of the questions for each category. And then a target state would be a desired level anywhere from one through five. So um, I'm going to choose to use five in my example, since that's the top level that we could actually achieve. So based on this summary table, we're asked to create a radar chart. So let's go ahead and open up the starting file for this activity. When we open up the starting activity, what we actually see is the sales effectiveness assessment. We're given some basic information here that this is a tool to measure the sales effectiveness of your organization. It does consist of five sales categories which are listed below we have sales recruitment consultative sales training sales analysis and forecasting salesforce automation crm systems and sales productivity management again we're asked to answer the questions below in each category with one strongly disagree all the way up to a value of five which represents strongly agree so let's take a brief look and uh, give this summary an overview. We do have each section highlighted in gray here. So for example, recruitment and retention, we have three questions. First one, new hires usually achieve their sales targets within three months of being recruited and trained. So what we are actually asked to do is pr to provide a score. And we actually do have a drop down menu here for you to select your score. But as long as the value is between one and five, uh, we can actually just type those values into. The category score will be a simple average. This is actually where we'll implement the if error statement as well. And we'll do this process for each of these categories, all the way to five. At the bottom, you'll actually see a summary table. Each one of the five categories listed here in this range. What we'll do is actually link the average score or the category score for each of these five respective categories indicate a target score like I mentioned before since the highest level of achievement is a five I'm going to strive to do five in each category in the cell below here it's a big cell that I merged in center what we actually want to do is create a radar chart with the current and state score so we can find out where we're scoring well in terms of our targets and where we have room for improvement so let's go ahead and go up and start at the very top, or at least in the first category. I want to write out the category score statement here. So what I'm going to do is simply write the average. I'm going to take the average of these three questions. And I know we don't have data in there yet, but we will. Let's hit enter. We do see a divide by zero error. We'd like to get rid of this error. Again, if you're giving this form to somebody to fill out, I think it's uh, more appropriate to hide these errors given the fact that they will be asked to fill in this information and once they do we will then display that score so let's go ahead and implement the if error 
if error. So essentially what we have here is two parameters, the value and then value if error. So if this average function generates an error like it's doing now, this would actually be true and we would like to indicate that we would want to display a blank in this case. If an error was generated, let's display a blank. If this statement, the average statement, does not generate an error, it'll go ahead and display this result. So it's actually a really handy function. Let's hit enter. We're not seeing a score, exactly what we would expect. To save a little time, I'm going to copy this cell and paste it here. And you got to be aware that each of these categories have different number of questions. So we'll, we'll still have to modify these but it's a little quicker because we don't necessarily have to write out um, the if error for everything. We just have to change the ranges. For example, if we would click here, we're only referencing the first, or I should say the last three questions. We simply just need to change that range to include all. And we can do this for the remaining categories. And finally here with the category five. Now we are asked to generate some information here, our score if we were actually taking this survey. What I'm gonna do is write a function, ran between, and generate a number between one and five. So this is gonna randomly pick either a score of one, which would be strongly disagree, two disagree, three somewhat agree, four agree, and five strongly agree, just for the sake of the example. But by all means, if you really want to uh, take the survey, go, for, you know, by all means do so. Let's hit enter. I'm gonna copy this cell location and paste it everywhere that I need a response. So I'm not gonna spend time reading the questions. Uh, we've already read those. If you filled out the survey, um, I just wanna solve this spreadsheet problem. So I have information generated in each of these categories. Now what we can do is actually copy these categories and paste values so these numbers won't continue uh, generating new values. So I'm going to copy this, paste special values, and if you know the shortcut keys, by all means use that. That's why the shortcut keys are very valuable. It saves you a lot of time. I'm going to keep this a little straightforward and just use the menus. So finally we have all the values. So now if we were to look at the averages, those averages aren't changing. Let's go ahead and discuss the summary. In the summary we have the five categories. Let's go ahead and reference the current state for each of these categories. For one I have a 4.7. For category two, I have a 3.0. For category three, I have a 3.5. For category four, I reference a 3.2. And finally for five, I have a 3.2. And as I stated in the beginning of the video, I have a target state, and I'm simply gonna tell Excel that my target state for all these are five. Certainly there might be areas of um, these categories where maybe your target state is four and that's perfectly fine. I just want to generate a five there for my example. Okay, let's go ahead and generate that radar plot. I'm going to click here on an empty cell and go to insert other charts and pick the first radar. And basically what I want to do uh, it's actually trying to guess what data I want here, which is not necessarily right. But since we have the canvas, let's go ahead and right click and change data and just delete each one of these categories because it's not set up the way we want it. So we do have a blank canvas now. I'm going to try to um, essentially generate this chart with the size of the cells that I uh, have constructed. So now our canvas is taking up the entire section that I had dedicated for that. Okay, once we have that size, we can go to select data. I'm going to go to add, and there's only two series that I want to add. The first series would be current state. The series value will be the average of the category scores. I said okay. The next category here is going to be target. 
and that target, those target values will be 5. Let's hit enter. I do, in fact, need to change the horizontal category. So let's hit edit and change it to the range here. I will say the 1, 2, 3, all the way to 5 does correspond with the questions, but I'd like my graph to be a little bit more descriptive. So I want the title there as well. Let's hit OK and OK and do some basic formatting. I would like my current and target legend key to actually show at the very bottom. So I'm going to do that. I think that's more attractive personally, but um, you know, you might differ in opinion. I'm going to fill this legend with um, a black outline. So let's go to shape outline and put black there. And of course we can resize that if we want. Let's uh, see what looks appropriate. Okay, that looks fairly... Uh, we could want a title on this. Let's go to layout, chart title, above chart. And I'm just going to simply say that this is my radar chart for sales effectiveness assessment and um, there's other things that we can do we can actually center this a bit more um, and remove the axis if you'd like to make it a little bit more clear what we're displaying uh, you can move this piece around just so you're sure uh, it's centered and things like that. But the important part is to look at this graph and try to understand where we're actually proficient at and where we have some weakness, uh, which could give you an idea of where which functional area to improve. It does look like, based on this random data, of course, that our sales and recruitment and retention is uh, stellar. We are almost at our goal, uh, 4.7 out of 5 to be exact. The other areas, for example, number two is our weakest link. It's the biggest gap, if you will, from uh, our current state to our target. And we have a score of three there. So it does give you a visual interpretation of where your company is today and where you would like to be tomorrow.